This tutorial is part of a YouTube playlist. You can access this and many more of the tutorials in this course. If you do like this YouTube playlist and you want to access the whole course, you can do on Udemy. The link to the YouTube playlist and YouTube course is in the video description. In this tutorial, we're going to implement Swagger UI to manage API documentation. Now, Swagger UI is a open source tool that provides an interactive user interface for visualizing and testing APIs. It is a great tool, one of many tools that we can utilize to interact with our endpoints, parameters, requests, response bodies, and authentication mechanisms defined within our API. In this tutorial, we'll go ahead and install Swagger UI into our existing setup. And then I'll take you through a, an introduction with Swagger UI and we we'll use it to test our existing API to endpoint. Now we don't actually need to do anything at all to check out the documentation here because we already have it available. So let's go into our project. Let's uh, CD into our FK Commerce folder. And let's go ahead and flask run and check this out. So I use the server address 127 point blah, blah, blah. And then I think it's 5,000 wasn't the server. Okay. And then all we need to do then is after 127.0.0.01 colon 5,000, the normal server address, we just type in slash and then docs. And then that should take you to some documentation. Now this might be familiar in terms of the documentation we have available for our API because it's detailing the endpoint that we created for the category. Now this is one of the great features of API Fairy in that it automatically creates our API documentation. We didn't need to do absolutely anything at all other than specifying the endpoint of course, which was the API slash category endpoint we created previously. We're not going to familiarize ourselves with this interface because we are going to be utilizing Swagger UI. Swagger UI is a popular choice for visualizing and testing APIs. That's why we have chosen it. But of course, it's completely up to you what interface you might like to use for visualizing and testing your APIs, if at all. Um, a few popular uh, choices that I can think of, uh, Redoc, uh, Postman, uh, RappyDoc, I think I've used an API doc. So that's just a, a few different popular choices for visualizing and testing APIs. So let's start to configure Swagger UI. Uh, let's go over to the config file and we can place this either in the config class or our development config. Maybe we make it specific to development config. So let's add that in below our database here. Let's go for API Fairy. So we just set up some of the API Fairy variables. Got that right. Uh, let's go for a title. So this is going to provide a title to our API documentation. So let's call this the F, uh, it's FK Commerce project. Uppercase or lowercase, whatever you like. Um, yeah, let's make it lowercase FK Commerce project. And we can specify the version that we're currently working on if we want to um, use versions. Uh, let's go for API very, we need special specialize the UI because we want to utilize the Swagger UI. So let's specify Swagger UI. Now, once you have specified Swagger UI here, in actual fact, that's all we need to do. So let's go ahead and run Flask now. So Flask run, head over and refresh. So just uh, refresh the previous page if you did have the docs open and you can now see the Swagger UI interface. So straight away, you can see that the project title that we've defined in our, in our config file, you can see it right here. We're not using any versioning, but if you did want to use versioning, you can specify API fairy underscore version equals something. So check out the API documentation, the API fairy documentation, and that will give you some additional information about configuring your API, but it's maybe irrelevant for us at this point. Uh, we can see here that we have the server IP address, and you can see that we have a section called Inventory Category API. Now you don't need to look at this, but if you go back into Inventory and in your initialization file, remember we created a blueprint named 
inventory category API. So what's going to happen, you're going to start to see as we start to develop this further and add more endpoints, we're going to be able to utilize blueprints to separate sections within our Swagger UI interface. So if we created a new blueprint, we would find a separate section for that within our Swagger UI interface. So that's going to nicely allow us to separate different sections or different components of our API so that we can categorize them or organize them here with uh, Swagger UI really quite easily. Okay, so we can see we have this endpoint. Uh, notice that it specifies the interaction type, in this case, get. So this endpoint will be initiated if we send a get request to this endpoint, this uh, URL endpoint. So it only accepts get. So if we were to post, send a post request to this endpoint, obviously it wouldn't, it wouldn't work. So here in Swag UI, we have a few different options. Uh, we have some parameters here. Now we can specify um, so some different information, which can be really useful. Uh, so we can specify, for example, if we are going to send data to the database, we might want to know different parameters which will help us out identify what data is actually needed to be inserted with that endpoint. Now you can see down here the responses, just an example response. So this is how the API endpoint will respond. This is the data points that will be returned, ID, name and slug. So that's some additional information as a developer that can be really useful. Now, just emphasize that slightly. Now, remember that we are potentially backend developers. We might be developing the API, but of course there might be someone separate developing the front end. So as we develop the back end, the person who's working on the front end, maybe um, working on a, a JavaScript framework, React, uh, Next.js, something like that, they can then go ahead and look at this documentation and take a look at what's then being returned from this endpoint. So on the front end, as they develop it, they can see the data that's going to be returned and therefore go ahead and develop it according to the data that's being returned from this endpoint. And of course, you might have multiple endpoints and it's going to help guide the, the front end developer potentially to understand exactly how to interact with this endpoint. So let's try this out. Now, I'm making the assumption that you have followed along to this point and you have your Flask server running. And remember in the previous tutorial, we did actually create some data in the database. And I'm assuming that your database is running. If not, you need to go through that process again of creating all those steps and adding some data before you can try this out. So I'm gonna try this out, execute. So we do have one entry in the database, remember. And you can see that I'm now outputting uh, that entry from the database into this response body. This documentation that we're creating here, utilizing the Swagger UI interface can be really useful for many reasons. One, as a developer, we can, a backend developer, we can start to test our API endpoints. And then as a front end developer, we can then go ahead and not only test the endpoints, but we can view the data that's related to our development on the front end so that we can develop for these sets, the set of endpoints that has been created to interact with the database, return data into the front end app. Maybe you can start to see already how useful this can be to view and interact with our API and API data. As we develop some more endpoints, we keep um, viewing this and utilizing it to test the endpoints that we create. I'll quickly update the config here to utilize a version as well. Uh, so underneath API Fairy, let's go ahead and define the API Fairy uh, version. So select version and let's go for 0.1 or maybe let's go for 1.0. Okay. So let's just make sure we restart the server for this. So I'll flask run. I'll go ahead and refresh the server. Refresh the server. It still says no version. Okay. Apologies, I've completely done that wrong, haven't I? It's API fairy underscore version, that's why. And let's try that again. Refresh. There we go. So we now have version 1.0 highlighted here at the top. As we add more interactions with our database, our endpoints, we will take a look at different features and functionality of the Swagger UI.